welcome everyone. I know it's a holiday weekend and long weekend and everybody is trying to go somewhere or have fun with family. So whatever you are doing, uh, you know, stay blessed. And that is very important. Stay safe and enjoy life. And that is very important. Thank you, Lamia, for a great introduction. Um, you know, I always say that I'm actually, I feel myself, I'm just still learning and doing things um, at this level too. And I've just start and I enjoy always. And that is for me, the biggest thing is to keep enjoying life and also uh, keep learning. So I never close, uh, you know, any opportunity where, um, where I can learn more and improve myself on certain aspects. And um, every year, I think I, or every few months, I sit and think, what are things in my mind, which I always find it so difficult, or, or which I am so afraid of, um, then I try to um, do address one by one. And I, so my goal is always to improve on things which I always felt I can never, ever, ever, ever achieve in my life. So, and this would be actually perfect, like uh, for, uh, for my journey beside medicine. So I'm a sleep specialist and I practice in Northern Virginia. I yeah. practice for more than uh, 20 plus years. And I have served a Department of Defense, the US Army, um, as well as uh, Wounded Warrior Programs. I'm so proud of that and also be a hospital private sector. Um, I still practice medicine, of course, and I, as a matter of fact, I saw patients uh, just half an hour coming here. Um, uh, also, I cover as a hospitalist, and um, you know, our, as you know, our hospitals are overwhelmed. And I am fortunate that my expertise, not only sleep, but also my background as a hospitalist can save uh, so many lives. So my hospital gets overwhelmed. I mean, there are patients lying in the hallways and everywhere. And um, there are doctors are and medical, all providers are really getting exhausted. And so they call and I said, yes, no worries. I'll pick as many shifts as you want or as much humanly possible. And that's where I think uh, I'm doing. So I continuously for the last two weeks We've been really working very hard in the hospital beside my, uh, and still I am doing my media work too. So uh, that's uh, with that, uh, you know, it's always important to have a balance and you always want to see, uh, seek more strength to, uh, to enjoy and do your professional as well as balance what really helps you to learn more. And I think with these, uh, my actually journeys, like anybody else, you know, thinking and uh, trying to learn one by one. So, you know, I'm of course in my wildest dream, I never thought I will be a media person or let alone I would have social media. Um, so Facebook, I was actually member, but I never actually was active at all. Um, there were several reasons because uh, one was I was with the uh, Department of Defense and because of the security reasons, we were trying to stay away from it. And also, um, I always found it not really very helpful. Uh, but there was a change, you know, where there was a change happened for me and uh, where I thought it's probably interesting to uh, at, I think the change started with my lifestyle and that's what brought me actually. And I think, uh, let me, I've uh, met uh, you and your family before, but uh, I think you were surprised that you were even in DC area, but you never heard my name before. So I, I think- That's an unfortunate that, doctor movie that I never heard. <laughs> no, no, but but thing is, that is true. I mean, what you were saying is truth because I was not a media person ever. And I was, uh, so the reason is um, very simple because uh, I had myself, uh, you know, kind of a new, um, basically learning everything new from, because I experienced something really unique in my life. And that was 
um, I always thought being a medical doctor, you know, we knew everything in terms of managing uh, patient care and which we learn, of course, but um, I never knew the most important thing is actual, uh, actually, actually working and uh, working on the lifestyle. So for me, it was a kind of awakening in, in every sense because I, I never thought uh, the real art of medicine and the real medicine is actually uh, curing those disease and uh, that is focusing on your lifestyle. And each one of you, um, you know, uh, which I see so many names right now, is a unique person. And uh, our uniqueness actually matters in terms of how we, um, we have, a, everybody has a value in this universe. And there's a reason we all are here. And then the one important reason is also to take care of ourselves because that's how we can know our place in, in this universe and what we can do. So that was for me uh, awakening. Um, you know, for me also the lifestyle. So my journey started basically with, I was like anybody else uh, driving and enjoying driving and um, suddenly my pulse started becoming irregular and I thought uh, is something is not right. So I pulled aside and uh, you know my pulse was and I was going to pass out. I literally saw darkness and I thought I'll never come back. Um, you know so but luckily that day I came back and never passed out. So I went through testing and basically it um, dawned on me that I'm getting pre-diabetic range and also gained, uh, of course, weight over the years. And, and, and we are all busy, you know, you are busy, we are busy. And we all kind of carried away with things and never pay attention to ourselves, our own body. So our own body needs this kind of repair done because, um, if we don't do that, then we cannot continue what we are doing. And that is very important. So for me, it was the beginning where I, at that time was the time, and you know, my wife used to always tell me that you have to take care of your health. And I said, no, I mean, it never kind of, it never strikes you, you know? But at that moment, for some reason, it just, Got, you, you just got it, it like clicked on in your mind. Okay, there has to be something about it. And then I went through testing and uh, luckily there was nothing wrong with my heart. Um, so the cardiologist said, maybe you try to lose some weight and all that. So I thought, okay, uh, you know, this is, let me just check it out. Let me just, remember I said, uh, there are always things I always try to learn and do things which I hated the most and probably because I'm a food lover myself, a big foodie. I go and eat out everybody, uh, everywhere. <laughs> and I think that's where we share a lot of passion with Lamia too. She loves food too, right? <laughs> yeah, my students know I'm a very big time foodie person. Okay, well, I think I, I would, each of you, I would say, you know, if you don't love food, uh, then, you know, you cannot connect and you cannot enjoy. It. So it's very important to keep happy never give up your likeness for food or anything you like because that's what really keeps us going but always learn the proper way so that is always important and I think that's the only difference uh, life has brought me is that I do still like and love food I mean every day I still have to try different dishes I still enjoy things and if I say that I don't then it'll be a wrong okay uh, so anyways, I tried to, uh, so I, for me, it was very difficult because uh, being somebody who really loves food and every day we think of, basically, I always thought at that time too, that I have to go and eat and do different things every day to, to keep enjoying. And that's true. But at that day, I think the, uh, you know, it just occurred to me, okay, maybe I should explore that. Maybe there is part in me which I never explored. And I think we always um, kind of uh, underestimate ourselves. 
in my opinion. And so I always would say that they, everybody has a part in themselves, a beautiful part, and that can really teach and um, us something really extraordinary. And that, I think that is my story. So I started to question and I started to work on that. And I said, okay, for a second, let me listen to um, what they have to say. And then I listened to that uh, dietitian and she gave me a powder diet and she said, you have to try that and you will lose weight and all that. And um, it costs $500. And I said, you know, $500, okay, I'll pay. So anyways, that day, uh, I told my wife, it's very hard, I'm sorry, but this is not going to work. It is not going to really help me. So, but in my mind, I started, there has to be a way out here. There has to be a reason or solution to this that, um, but more I thought, more I, it, it just occurred to me, okay, maybe I should look at the philosophy or reasoning behind it and then try to see what, if I can change somehow my current uh, lifestyle and change it towards better, uh, maybe one change, maybe a small change, okay? So uh, that's what really motivated me to look into that. So I made a change, a little bit, a little bit change, and that was just to cut down the portion size and also maybe try not to eat as much at the junk food, okay? just a little change. To my surprise, uh, in one week I lost two pounds, okay? So I said, wow, you can lose two pounds by just that change. And it wasn't a big change. I mean, I was still enjoying my barbecue chicken. I was still enjoying my, uh, you know, good stuff. It's just, I cut down the rice portion and I cut down the amount. And so for me, that was kind of, eye-opening. I said, wow, maybe there is a way out so I, I can refine this. Let's look at the list which that lady gave. So I looked at that list. Okay, there is some letters. Okay, so I searched that night and I said, oh, okay, there are 32 types of letters. Okay, maybe some I don't like, you know, we don't like letters um, generally. And I said, okay, maybe some, I might like it. And uh, that was, so I checked it, I like butter lettuce. So I said, okay, let me try that. So I tried butter lettuce and it tastes way better actually than what I thought. Um, and so then I had, uh, you know, other, um, so I said, okay, let me um, kind of mix that with that and see if that works better. So in that list of uh, food items, which my dietitian gave, I just, picked a few which I might like, I might like. And then I, I said, okay, I will keep this trend. And I kept on telling my dietitian, okay, I'm going to keep showing up every week. Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot take your powder diet, but I am going to actually uh, work on it. And she said, oh, that's very interesting. I never heard anyone like that. I said, okay, let's maybe it's maybe I will fail or not. But I, I for some reason I was confident that is I will learn something new. Yeah. So, Rubik, I mean, can I interrupt? How do you really balance your health, your diet plan, your talk shows, your awards, and your medical profession? Like there is there is a lot. Yeah, there are a lot. And I think, uh, uh, you know, I always say, have you seen people who juggle in circus and, you know, they juggle nine balls or 10 balls or things. And the reason they can juggle is, uh, you know, they, they have timing, uh, you know, they do everything timed well. And same thing we are. And I am juggling media, I'm juggling media, medical practice. And I always think, uh, as mind as a beautiful thing, the more you work, the better it gets. It's not the other way around. So less you work, worse it gets. And that is, I think the uh, new uh, theory has also proven that neurons actually in the brain, they make less connection if you don't stimulate it. So, which is true. 
So, so more uh, the neurons work out of input, the more input it gets, the more neurotransmitter it produces and then makes those connections, which we call learning. And those are actually, so that's why it is easy. If people who do that more and they keep active, they, they are less likely to develop dementia, in my opinion, as people who are just sitting idle and not doing much. So how much do you, how much time do you give to your talk shows? Like when you come back from your clinics, like how does your look routine, like a regular routine look like? Okay, so my regular routine is, uh, let's say I, uh, you know, I personally, I wake up a little bit late. I'm not early, but I, that is the truth. So um, I would pick a day, a time, and I try to make that uh, maybe eight or nine o'clock in the morning. Then, of course, I have to run my sleep centers, which I have quite a few. And then... Uh, my, and of course, I have to manage uh, employees. I have, you know, 50, 60 employees to manage too. Then we do that. And, um, you know, so, but during that time, um, I want to make sure that I would address, um, and I have breakfast, by the way. So I have breakfast. My breakfast is same all these years. Uh, I never change. And you want to have your breakfast and then, uh, you want to do uh, lunch and also, so I then have to, many times they call me from hospital, um, that can you do a couple of hours and I do that, sometimes I have to do simultaneously. So I'm rounding also at the hospital and in between five, 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I have to see patients of my sleep and that has also happened. Um, so, uh, yes, I, but I keep uh, working, uh, uh, you know, during day, I, uh, you know, I think the reason I get uh, all that energy is I enjoy it, uh, every part of it, whether it is, and for me, uh, you know, every patient is unique in, because they all can look at everything um, that would be same or it could be different if you just pause for a second and just listen to them then you really find that there are interesting stories everybody has so that makes my work very interesting this work and uh, more i work better actually uh, i get at it and then i have of course lunch and then four or five o'clock like now is i was done with my patients and then I am here and I, I dedicate one or two hours to media. Uh, so I do my editing too. And we have over 70,000 on Facebook now, um, 50,000 on Insta and uh, you know YouTube too. I've done almost 500 shows. And wow. uh, so after that, of course, then I give time uh, you know, for my wife to we have uh, you know dinner together and then i try to do my exercise every day uh, which i have changed i don't go to gym please don't go to gym so change it to to actually your normal routine so i tell that i stay at home and i would just walk in the hallway and keep talking or uh, with my family too so and if there are i'm on call i have to answer that too so those keep, that's how my life is continuous. Dr. Roy, what do you enjoy most? Your media, your slavery field, your, or your medical? What, you what know, you? It, it, I, I think, you know, I'd say it's, it's like example, it's like kids. So if you have, uh, you know, many kids, uh, can you pick one favorite? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. That's a good comparison. <laughs> Yeah, so for me, that is exactly what it is. Media is, is a baby. Um, I, you know, I, I think my last baby, I would say right now, because my first baby was medicine, second baby was flying, third baby was uh, media. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many babies I'll have. <laughs> so guys, uh, do you have any, like, you know, please ask questions to Dr. Moby. He's here with us. Like, I know like his time is very precious because he's doing a lot of things, but, um, you know, so avail this time, you just ask, ask him questions. Let's see if our students have some questions. 
Okay, I think they are probably all on phone. No. Uh, let's see. We have 37. But um, any questions for Dr. Moby? Okay. okay, I hope they are listening. Yeah, they are listening, I know. <laughs> And I know it's a, uh, it's okay. I think we have one message. What do you eat for our uh, Megan? I know my students are sometimes like, they write their questions. Okay. So what, what do you eat for breakfast? Okay, now okay, very good. Megan has a question for you, Dr. Movi. Okay, very good. Uh, Megan, uh, thank you for posting the question. You know, it is important for breakfast uh, to have simple breakfast and which you can uh, do. So my breakfast is egg bites and uh, without yolk and you can eat four or five of them that's fine and i have some lettuce cucumber and then i have um, uh, some nuts uh, you can have 20 almonds or you can have um, a, a protein bar if you prefer or you can have so i have that in mind so and with a coffee or tea so that's my breakfast second question dr moby you have is from dylan and mm -hmm. he's asking, when it comes to time management, how do you handle the things you need to do versus the things you enjoy? Okay. Well, personally, like I said, I enjoy all every bit of it. Uh, for me, the priority is what is most important that day. So there are some priorities, of course. Let's say, for example, if there is a call from hospital and they say, you know, we really need you, uh, you know, then I would change the, a little bit of the order. I, I might move my patients. I might cancel my immediate talk. And I so some uh, get priority. And right now, COVID is getting priority on a lot of things. Um, you know, because I know if I don't go there, there will be people can die. So, you know, that is for me the most important thing. Uh, so that's what uh, right now is a priority. Personally, I like a uh, mix of all to enjoy. Okay. You have one more, like two more questions. What keeps you motivated with how busy your daily life is? Okay. Well, I, uh, you know, that is a very good question. Thank you for posting. You know, a lot of people ask, what, uh, how, where do you find this energy and all that to keep motivated? I say, you know, my energy comes from all of you listening to you and paying attention to all of you. You know, when I walk in hospital and I am actually sometimes dead tired, so sad and depressed because people are losing life, it really breaks our heart and my too. Uh, so I, we are all human, you know? And so it, actually that's how I wrote my first song. So I, it was midnight and I was really, ER was full and it was very, very sad situation. So I, I said, okay, fine, I have no strength to continue. So, and then anyways, I walked backwards and I met this lady and she was a wonderful lady. I asked her, you know, uh, wait a second, uh, you're working also late hour, how come? And she says, doc, everybody called off and left and uh, we have very short staff. People uh, are not showing up on work and I am continuously working from so many days. And I looked at her and I said, you know, we honor your service. What you are doing is excellent. I'm a physician. Yes, I get paid more than you. And I'm also working late, but you are special. You are my hero. That gave me energy. That gave me, I said, but that person can do continuously 14 days. What is wrong with me? So at that motivated me. And that's why I wrote my song, Unsung Heroes, and you can all check it out. Uh, so if we pay attention to even once to people around us, I feel, I feel motivated. That's why I get so much energy because there's so much different input from everyone. Dr. Moby, I have one more question. Like, is there a specific type of diet you prefer or follow? Are there some that may be better for a learning brain or for college students that need to be focused during the day and feed their brain? Now you're having more medical questions than having some media-related questions. 
But go ahead. Uh, I love that. I love that. I will, I will answer as many as. Okay. So remember, diet is, uh, you know, the diet is, I think, a wrong uh, idea. So I always say best is appropriate food. What your body can process uh, safely is good. Anything your body can, don't take it. So which means don't eat more than your body can burn. It doesn't matter what you eat. If so, if you're gonna eat a lot of protein and uh, and your body cannot handle, guess what? It's poison for you. So I have this uh, saying in my book too: uh, is uh, the difference between medicine and po and poison is amount. So anything becomes toxic if you take too much. So uh, remember, even water. If you drink a lot of water without balanced salt electrolyte, it lowers your sodium, and you can really have a lot of problem for your body. So appropriate uh, portions are the key here. Eat less, drink some water, but leave some appetite. Feel how uh, people uh, should be, you know, the, you know, people who don't get, or they're not as blessed or lucky as we are. So just feel for them once and see if you can just keep a little appetite and you should feel that. Don't, you don't have to feel yourself all the time. And I, I thought I will do one day app like this where people could uh, go to any fast food and they uh, they want to downsize their food and give one to homeless or some free. They should do that. I think uh, here we we are blessed with so much everything, uh, you know, food and wealth. So I think we should. Uh, there are people who are um, suffering, you know, and we can share all that, and that will improve our health. And uh, Dr. Moby, we have one more question. How do you deal with procrastination in your work life? Because I think I might have this kind of a question. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I deal with procrastination. You, you know, we do our best is try to fill uh, every day with uh, as much work as done that day. If you procrastinate things for next day and day after, most likely you will not be able to finish. Okay, so do not let it go beyond. So my goal for my health is one week uh, maximum. Uh, if I, let's say one day I cannot walk my five miles, I can do fill up next day or day two. Uh, but, you know, for work, do not um, let it go more than I would say uh, 48 hours because then you'll forget exactly details of it and you. So I think um, you have somebody asked about sleep paralysis yeah okay great that's a great sleep question okay now sleep paralysis is actually condition where uh, if you all remember when we are dreaming we are not able to act our dream shouldn't normally should not be able to act our dreams uh, which means that you could be running in your dream which is a ram rapid eye movement and then as a result um, you know, so that's the normal. So sleep is a very complicated uh, aspect of our body. People think it's like shutting down your brain and going to sleep. No, exactly not. Okay. So there, uh, there are stages in our brain, which brain does that because brain is a complicated organ. So it has a REM, which is a rapid eye movement and non-REM, which is a non-rapid eye movement. Okay. So in REM, you uh, can do everything. Your blood pressure goes up and you're experiencing a lot of emotions and everything, but you cannot act on it. So um, same thing can actually happen, uh, which we call a little bit daydreaming. So your REM portion can come during day. It can happen before you fall asleep or after you fall asleep. If that happens, it can paralyze you. Uh, so there's an entity which we call narcolepsy where um, people get emotional and then they can feel weak in their knees and so forth. So that's a, also a medical condition, very understudied and it's very common in teenagers. Certain uh, drugs can also bring on. Uh, it does run in genetics and you can check out, uh, you know, the website and uh, read about it, um, but that is an important aspect. Same stands for if somebody's body is not paralyzed and they're sleeping, that is a neurodegenerative condition, 
which is, means that your brain is going through changes and that can precede development of Parkinson's disease by five years. So five or 10 years later, somebody can develop Parkinson's disease and that starts manifestation as they are actually moving in the bed, kicking and it has happened, they might kick their loved ones or they fall out of the bed or, so those are very important things. So sleep is far more complicated than a lot of people know. Last question, Dr. Movi, what do you do to manage work at the hospital with your social media? Okay, well, uh, social media, I have a days where I assign and I do dedicated time for that. Uh, social media, I try not to answer during work time, of course. But after that evening, every evening, I, I do one hour towards uh, social media for sure because I have to answer so many questions and you know, there are interviews and um, movies and editing and all that. Do you have like someone helping you with that social media or with your productions? Yeah, we have a media team. I have actually uh, a bureau chief, she's from Singapore and she's running the uh, Singapore section and Asian section. She does news and views, her name is Vicky. Then I have also a few people here in Virginia that, that help me, um, you know, but a lot of uh, work I do basically is 70 to 80% of work myself. And uh, do you have that link of your book, Dr. Moby? Uh, the one yeah. that you have written down on actually on diet plans and what was it really, actually I just bought it online. Yeah, yeah, this is the one. Uh, if you just you... share the link with, me, with my students, that could be a great resource. To read. Yeah, and that, that is, I can, and also my TED talk, uh, if you want to listen to that, that also explain a lot of, uh, you know, importance of sleep as well as uh, diet. So, diet plans, yeah. Okay, so this is my awesome. book. So you can check it out. And, uh, you know, I've had 4,000 people uh, lose actual weight. I was with Department of Defense. I actually have a lot of soldiers. Um, and then uh, also it's important that, uh, you know, so whatever is in the book is uh, reality because that's what I practice. I lost hundred pounds and uh, it's been five years and I kept it. I never ever gained it. And I, uh, you know, there, you have to work on it. Uh, it's not one day thing, it's your lifestyle. Okay, so it's not, uh, you know, you have to continue to improve it. Yeah, so, because Dr. Mavi, you don't eat lemon bars. Like yesterday, I had three lemon bars. Lemon bar? What is that? Oh, the lemon bars are like so good. It's like very sweet, but it's made <laughs> like out of cheese and lemon. So uh, my students know. I mean, okay, yesterday... well, they know. Okay, well, uh, you know, if you like that, I would say you don't eat, don't eat three of them or five of them. You can eat half of them. So my, my uh, you know, there are things which really entice me and I'm like, you know, I have to, like chocolate is my weakness, biggest. Okay, my thing, how many people love chocolate? I, I'm sure everybody loves. So uh, for me, I have to eat dark chocolate, but I separated sugar out of it. And then, so I still eat dark chocolate every day. Uh, by the way, it, it does eat actually help your endorphins make you happy because that keep me happy uh, so i think i uh, people who love chocolate they can relate to me <laughs> and dr movie is like uh he flies planes he has like his own jet plane and he used to fly from virginia to actually austin right dr movie no no mm -hmm. not austin um, I was from uh, Upper Michigan to uh, Virginia uh, and also from Upper Michigan to Chicago. So I used to, by the way, I love food as you, I told you. And he used to fly to get food. Uh, yeah, just that, to eat. Right? Yeah, just to eat. Just to eat, guys. Can you believe it? He used yeah. to fly just to get food. And he used to fly to uh, Toronto, right, Dr. Mobi? Yeah, Toronto yeah. to eat mangoes. To eat mangoes. So I love food. I mean, I and I still do that. I would fly if I have a favorite food. Now, Lamia was telling me there is some good restaurant. By the way, I love San, San Antonio, Texas. They have the best uh, bread, uh, which was a Hazawadi restaurant. I checked it out. 
and I I was there and I had to eat. This was this big. Uh, I think must be about a foot long kind of bread. So I had to eat that. It was it was paratha, special one. They made it on a special. Uh, you know, oven or something. So I had to eat that. I could not say no. I ate it, but after that, I ran seven miles <laughs> to balance it. Uh, so because I said I don't want to gain weight. Yes, you know, we we do and undo things, and that's I think that's that's another thing. If you really really into something eating, just be be uh, you know, uh, put up your adult pants and just do little walk or do balance it okay so there are two ways to do things um, one is if you don't eat and that's fine too but the other is if you do eat just balance it with exercise yeah. and that is important okay so and you can have mix and match nothing uh, yeah there's more than one way of doing yeah. things so Thank you so much, Dr. Murphy, for honestly for your precious time. I know it's like a weekend in Washington in Virginia. And uh, Virginia is like very busy place when it when you have weekends, you have parties, you have a lot of things going on. So thank you so much for giving us time, your precious time. And uh, maybe next semester, you know, when things get better with this COVID and Delta variant, we might have you like, you know, in person. But uh, but, but again, they thank you, Dr. Mobi, for seriously sparing your precious time for us. Okay, well, thank you for inviting. I, I would just give uh, one message, just make sure, you know, uh, things are sad and, uh, you know, everywhere around us uh, with COVID and everything, but there is a beauty in everything. So try to search for it, try to even pause for one second, appreciate and be blessed, feel the gratitude. There is a reason we are living and then there is a reason we can find answer to all that. But, uh, you know, whatever you do, stay safe and keep working on it. And we all will be safe. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you me. all. And I'll see you all on Wednesday, face to face. Enjoy your long weekend. You too. Take care. Thank you, Lamia, for having me.